Hi, I'm Steven from Patchworks, and today we're going to be checking out how to sequence using Pamela's Pro Workout. Pamela's Pro Workout is the successor to the very famous Pamela's New Workout. It is a Swiss Army knife of a utility module, and they've just expanded even more and added more features to this new one. We've got this little skiff together. We've got the SSF Ultra Kick, an analog kick voice. We have ALM's Taiso Daiko. This is a dual 12-bit wavetable-based drum voice. And then we have Intelligence Plunk, a physical modeling voice. And then we have the classic Beehive, AKA Mutable Plats. So I've already have a patch here prepared and a sequence prepared. All right, so what you just heard was a sequence fully done by Pamela's Pro Workout. Uh, in this patch, we are utilizing the Euclidean sequencing on here, as well as a looping quantized random CV. All right, let's check out how I program Pam's Pro Workout to make the sequence. So essentially, I'm utilizing the Euclidean rhythm on here to tr uh, sequence the triggers for the Ultra Kick, the Tice of Daiko, Plonk, and Beehive. <music> So just a quick rundown of what uh, Euclidean sequencing is. It essentially is you give it a number of steps. So in this case, we have 16. And then you assign it a number of triggers. In this case, we have three. So then what it does is that it'll take those three triggers and try to evenly disperse them within those 16 steps, or however many steps you decide to give it in total. So we're going to dive into channel one right now, which is triggering plonk. So if you long press the encoder while well, channel one is selected, usually you start right at the wave shape. But I'm actually gonna scroll over to the left and find Euclidean triggers. So right now I have four steps of Euclidean triggers or 16 steps with four triggers in those 16 steps. And normally the first step would actually start on the B1. But what I've done here is because this is a snare, I want it to land on the three and the four. So I've actually used the Euclidean shift here and click it. And you can actually shift that Euclidean pattern to wherever you want it. So that's very cool. And so essentially I just took that concept and applied it to the other channels that is triggering the other modules. So just to demonstrate how to sequence using the Euclidean sequencer on here, I am on channel four and channel four here is sending a trigger out to the SSF ultra kick. So I'm gonna go long press the encoder, step into the menus, and then I'm gonna find Euclidean steps. So here, this is where I set the total number of steps for the Euclidean sequence for this channel specifically, because it can be individually set per channel on PAMS. So here, I'm just gonna give it 16 steps, and then I'll hit play. It's still just firing off because we haven't given it any Euclidean triggers yet. So I'm gonna hit okay on that and then start adding a trigger. So now we have one. You can see it step through the 16 steps. And because there's one, it's just gonna put it right at the beat one just to disperse it evenly across all 16. As I add two, you can see it actually has doubled and they're still even. Add three. And now this is kind of where it gets a little weird because you're dealing with three notes on uh, even 16 steps. And so it's gonna try its best to disperse it evenly across those 16 steps. But this is when Euclidean sequencing gets pretty cool because you get some weird rhythms out of it. So let's do seven Euclidean triggers. I can go over to the Euclidean shift to essentially offset every single one of those triggers. And just to see what it's like in context, let's unmute the other parts. So essentially that is how I sequence Taiso Daiko as well as Plonk using the same Euclidean techniques for the Ultra Kick, Tysodaiko, and Plonk. 
uh, just sh using different channels on Pan's Pro Workout. So let's talk about Beehive. And so right now, Beehive is actually our melody. We're playing some chords and it sounds like this. Let's mute that snare. And this is all being sequenced through PAMs. And it's not just the random sequence, like it is, we're actually looping a random voltage. So let's dive in here and see what it looks like. Let's talk about sequencing melody with PANS Pro. In this case, I'm sending a melody from channel six on the Pro Workout to Beehive. And so let's dive into channel six here. For the shape, I have it set to a random LFO, not a slewed one, because that is an option but I want it stepped in this case. Then what I'll do, I'll head over to the quantize page and then I just pick a scale that I want. So let's do a pentatonic minor. And then now I'm gonna go find the loop. So loop beats allows you to, if you hear a part of the random CV that sounds really nice, and you'll be like, oh, I want to loop those four or eight steps or however many steps you want to loop. PAMS lets you do that. So we're going to hit play. We're not looping anything. It's just the random CV that's being quantized going into the Volt Per Octave. So let's do a loop of four. So now I can hear it's looping four beats over and over, even though we have it set to be a random wave shape. So that's a neat way to capture a sequence using random voltage, a quantizer, and the looper built into PAM's Pro Workout. And keep in mind, you have eight channels to do Euclidean sequencing or that stepped random quantized type of sequencing. So this is a very capable uh, sequencer if you really think about it. It's not just utilities, not just LFOs or clock division. It is so much more than that. And that's why we all love Pamela's Pro Workout. All right, so that's enough talking from me. Let's just dive into jamming with this patch we got here. <laughs> 